petrol tank in your car completely full to the brim, especially on a hot day, because the petrol will expand, overflow, and cause a huge explosion. Number two hint, stop eating tomatoes. Eliminate it from your diet, because they are inserted with spider genes by some evil corporations that will, so that they can extract spider silk from the tomatoes. And one more tip. Never consume canned foods from Thailand because they are deliberately tainted with blood, contaminated with HIV. And you may contract AIDS. Sounds like useful messages? And you're all ready to share it with your families and friends? No, no, please put down your handphones. Please put down your handphones. These are all hoaxes. They are pseudoscience. There is no science in it. But we see these messages making their rounds in social media. Why is it so? Because of the low science literacy rate among the public. And this is not just in Malaysia. It is also in the US, the technology hub. People think they only consume genes or DNA when they eat genetically modified crops or foods. But we all know all living things has genes and DNA and we eat them, that is what we eat. So the problem is low science literacy rate in, among the population. Now, can you think about something that you did since you woke up this morning? till the very moment now that has got nothing to do with science. The shower that you took, the food that you consumed, the electricity that you used, the car that you drove, the handphones that you used, the list goes on. And this is what Carl Sagan, the late American astrophysicist, says about it. We live in a world that is exquisitely dependent on science and technology but where anyone knows hardly anything about science and technology. So this is a problem, and this is what I'm going to talk to you about today. It's about science communication, a field that is relatively new in Malaysia and in developing countries, and the importance of communicating science. Have a look at these images. New technologies, emerging technologies, and the unknowns create fear among the public. Technologies like genetically modified crops, vaccination, nuclear technology, stem cell therapy, gene therapy, creates a lot of public controversies, concerns, and debate. It causes polarized debates among the public. In the past, even Wi-Fi, handphones, and microwave ovens were not spared from scaremongering. Public tend to reject new technologies because of the fear of the unknown. And the anti-science groups effectively use emotions to shape public opinion against science. And this causes huge problem. Lack of public understanding of science not only is a problem and it causes negative perception among the public, but it is also a problem in the way a country moves in its direction in science, technology, and innovation. Before I go further, let us look at another problem in Malaysia. We have a huge problem today because the young students today do not want to pursue science courses or science uh, classes. After PT3 exam, our students do not want to go into science stream because science is not sexy, it's not going to give you the money, it is complicated, it's too difficult, and many other reasons that they have. This is going to be a big problem. If we do not have enough students in the secondary school, later down the road, we are not going to have enough students in the tertiary education pursuing science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or what we call as STEM. And if this continues, we are not going to have enough professionals in the STEM area. How can we progress as a nation if we do not have enough people in STEM careers. So it's going to be a big problem in the country. Before I go further on the benefits of communicating science, let me tell you what is science communication. Scientists often think that science communication is writing in journals. Their job is done 
when their research is published in journals. That is not communicating science because it does not reach the wider audience. It does not reach the mass. It does not reach the public. These journals are not accessible to the public. And even if they are, they are not comprehensible to the public. Science communication is communicating to the public in the simple language, translating science and research into a language that the public will understand. M giving them messages that's relevant to them, which will enable them to make decisions in their life. That is science communication. Now let's look at the other reasons for communicating science. Can you think about a country that has attained developed nation without a strong science technology and innovation? So we need to be scientifically literate. We need to have many professionals in the STEM area for our country to be developed. For this, we need to communicate science. Our policymakers and politicians, no matter what their background is, must have some basic understanding in science so that they can develop policies and regulations that will support the growth of research development and commercialization and not stifle science, technology, and innovation. And so these are the reasons, the economic and political reasons to communicate science. Then there is a democratic reason. We need public participation in the direction the country takes in moving science, technology, and innovation. We need the public to defend and criticize research priorities and adoption of technologies. We need to democratize science. Science does not just belong to the scientific community. Science should not just stay in ivory towers. It should be in the masses. Again, we have other issues in Malaysia. The bauxite mining. I'm sure all of you have heard about this. Rare earth processing. How can public make a decision on this? if they're not equipped with some basic understanding of science. So to take part in the adoption of technology, in the research direction of a country, how taxpayers' money can be used in science technology and how it can benefit the people, there should be public participation, citizen participa participation in a country's direction. So for this, we need to communicate science. And there is other reasons as well. There is a cultural reason. As I said before, how can we make science part of our culture? How can we make science a topic for discussion? We are all happy to discuss politics. We are happy to discuss movies and sports. Is science part of our topics when we sit in our kopitiam? It is not. It is, is science part of our discussion in the family, living room? It is not. So how can we make science part of our culture? How can we make science part of our lifestyle so that it becomes a leisure activity? People are happy to go to science museums. People are happy to go to science theaters and make it as their leisure and ho hobbies. This is important. And this will also increase the demand for science news, articles, programs, and stories in newspapers and TV. This will help in all the other reasons that I've mentioned, where science helps us to make a decision. The last one is the utilitarian reason. We are all consumers of science. We are sitting in this nice hall, and everything around us is because of science. And in every aspect of our, our life, we need to make decisions based on our science knowledge. What food do I eat? What is good for my diet? Do I spend so much to buy organic food? Or can I feed my family and be healthy with a normal food? What type of medical treatment should I take? There are so many alternative therapies now. How do I decide on them? Are they safe for me and my family? So we need science understanding on it. How do I make decisions on how I care for the environment? All these things need science information. So I'm not saying everyone should be science students or science graduate, but science must be one essential knowledge that we are hungry for. And scientists should communicate science for that reason. So for all these reasons, science communication is important. We have seen how important it is to the population, 
We have seen how important it is to the country. But now scientists may ask, what are the benefits for me? Why should I communicate science? When I'm already busy teaching, supervising students, doing research and with administrative, ad administrative work. And I'm not trained to uh, communicate science. I don't have the funding to do that. I do not have the resources to do that. And it doesn't help in my career progression. These are the challenges scientists face when they are asked to communicate science. But the scientists and those in science, uh, part of the science community, must understand that there is a huge benefit for them to communicate science. Increasingly, all science fields are becoming multidisciplinary. You can't bring your research to the market for commercialization without the input and collaboration with other experts in other areas. For that, you need to communicate your research to someone else in a different expert field. You need industry support to take your research outside to the market. And these people are, may not be scientists, most of them. So you need to communicate your research and put your research in the public domain so that you get collaborators from the industry players. You need funding to take your research to the pub, uh, commercial level. And today, the funding landscape is changing. Gone are the days when funding came from public sector, from Ministry of Science, from Ministry of Education, from research uh, agencies in the countries. Today, there's crowdfunding, where public put in money into research, potential research. There is venture capitals. There are angel investors. And all these people are not trained in science. So for these reasons, scientists must communicate science to a wider audience, stakeholders who are not in the science field. These are the benefits for scientists to communicate science. And wouldn't it be nice to have celebrity scientists, to show to the public, to have icons, to have role models? We have celebrity chefs. We have well-known lawyers. But who are the role models for the young people among the scientists? Who comes as first when we ask, do you know a local scientist? So we need celebrity scientists. We need to put scientists in the public domain. For this, scientists must come out and put their research and communicate to the public. This is important. Now it leads to the next a few questions. Is communicating science easy? Can anyone do it? Do we have enough professionals trained in science? Are there courses offered by universities in communicating science, in science communication? The answer to all these things is a big no. It is not yet a mainstream field in Malaysia. Science communication is not an easy task because the public is not made up of a homogeneous group. There are so many stakeholders, audiences in the public, each one having their own interest, messages that's relevant to them, values, trusted sources, tools, and media that they use. So to target each audience, a trained science communicator must customize their communication to each target audience, which is a complicated thing to do. So we need trained people in this area. So what is the way forward? We need a, a national policy on science communication to make science communication a mainstream field. We need to incentivize our scientists so that they are encouraged and they are motivated to be part of the communicating science to the public. We need to introduce science communication module in every STEM programs in the country. This is already happening in many other countries. And we need all these things to put science in the public domain. Every university and every research institute must have at least one science communicator so that the person can support the scientists in bringing public to closer to the science so that the research is put into the public domain. So there's a support for scientists who want to communicate science. So this has to take place in Malaysia, and this is already happening in developing countries. I'm a science communicator. I was trained in microbiology, biochemistry, and my master's in biotechnology, but I decided to be 
a science communicator after doing my PhD in science communication. And I'm really enjoying my job because it, I'm helping people to make decisions, the policy makers, politicians, farmers, consumers, and students. So I really feel it is giving me so much of satisfaction and you too can do it. You don't have to be a full-time science communicator like me, but in your capacity as a scientist, as an industry player, you too can do it with the help of social media today. It is really an exciting field. So let us say goodbye to pseudoscience. Let us say goodbye to fake news on, in science and embrace science as part of our lifestyle and embrace science as part of our culture. Thank you very much.